Hi everybody, this is uh, Barry Schwartz. This is the Search Buzz Video Recap. Today is Friday, March 25th. I'm doing this video from home today and uh, it's coming into work a little bit late. So I figured we'd get started right away. And uh, the first topic I wanted to discuss was um, that Google um, did a possible Google toolbar update this past week. Um, first reports came out March 22nd, March 23rd. We have a post about it on March 23rd with some links to Webmaster World and Digital Point Forums where we have people talking about it. Again, it's not a major thing, but I just thought I'll let people know. Um, there are a lot of people expecting the, the Panda Farmer update to hit the UK, uh, Google UK. It's going to happen soon. Some people are possibly thinking that it's happening or it happened already, um, but I didn't see enough signs for that to be the case as of yet. Um, so we have a lot of people discussing when it's going to happen, what, you know, why it hasn't happened yet. Um, Google said it should have happened by now. Google said weeks um, after it launched, and it's been weeks. So the question is, when is it actually going to come down? Uh, I personally assume that it won't hit the UK until Google does an update in the US, where they revise their algorithm a little bit to um, help the sites that are complaining that should not have been hit, the collateral damage. Uh, we have a post about this on March 21st at seroundtable.com. Um, Matt Cuss did a video this past week I'm um, talking about Google Translate and specifically about translation services and how you can localize your content. In that video, in the second half, about four, a minute and 45 seconds in, he talked about um, using Google Translate to automatically translate your site and then to publish that translation on your website could be considered spam. Um, that being the case, um, we already wrote about this back, um, I believe, uh, in August of last year. Um, and basically, you don't want to go ahead and take your site use Google Translate or any other automated translation system to translate all the content and then publish it, that content on a new domain um, because that's considered spam by Google and it's automated generated content and you should not do that because it reads pretty badly. If you want more information about that, March 23rd at scroundtable.com. Um, also, Google, this got a lot, a lot of traction, this post. March 22nd, I wrote about how Jack from the Google forums said, that a Facebook button will not influence your rankings. A Facebook like button will not have any impact on your rankings. He was specifically talking about, and I put it in context in the post, about it not hurting your rankings because of it slowing down your website or stuff like that. He basically said um, it won't hurt your rankings because somebody was complaining, hey, I put the Facebook like button on my site and all of a sudden my rankings dropped. It said, basically Jack saying, Putting a Facebook like button on your site is not going to go ahead and drop your rankings. So then people took that to mean, oh wait, Facebook like buttons um, um, doesn't, doesn't Google use social data to start ranking stuff? Well, technically Google does not use um, Facebook um, in their social ranking factors as of yet. They use uh, Twitter, they use Google Reader, they use a lot of other things, but not Facebook currently. Second is people were talking about site speed issues and how Google uses site speed as a ranking factor. And yes, it might slow down your site a little bit, but probably not enough to impact your uh, Google rankings. More details about that, March 22nd at seroundtable.com. Um, this past week, Yahoo made a, launched a pretty big uh, feature called Yahoo Search Direct. It's basically like Google Instant, but with only in, within the search box itself. Uh, when you click in the search box, Basically, it gives you trending searches for that day. It also, if you start typing, it actually starts to predict um, your searches. Um, it gives you direct answers right in the search box, uh, direct results and rich content as well right in that search box as you type. Oh, people are saying Google, uh, Yahoo, trans, uh, Yahoo basically co is copying Google uh, with Google Instant. Uh, obviously, they do act very differently, but the truth is Google actually um, copied Yahoo because Yahoo came out with Yahoo Instant back in 2005. Um, then they got rid of it, and then Google came out with it in 2010, five years later. And now Google's uh, Yahoo is coming back with their own answer, Yahoo Search Direct, um, as their way of trying to um, differentiate between Google, uh, you know, between what Microsoft does, obviously because uh, Google Yahoo is using Microsoft's data, so Yahoo is trying to one up them with uh, user interface changes. More information about that March 24th at seroundtable.com. Uh, Bing has made a major update to their mobile interface. If you go to it on your Android phone or your iPhone, not your Windows 7, um, it only supports HTML5 enabled smartphone browsers, and Windows 7 does not support that yet. Um, you'll see major updates to the interface. You could slide things around like an like a iPhone app, like up and down, swipe things left and right. 
Um, they improve their transit directions and add real-time transit information. They improve their image search so you can actually slide through images. Um, they also improve their shopping information, they add in comparison shopping, questions and answers, uh, discovering product details and more user reviews. They add a weather auto suggestions when you type in uh, with instant answers in the search bar itself. They added iPhone app search, so if you're searching for something, if you're searching on an iPhone, it will actually show you if there's results, iPhone apps that are related to it and link to it. And also they have movie search, um, movie search features in there as well. Um, so I have some videos and demos about it on March 24th at SARoundTable.com if you want to take a look. That is pretty nice. Um, there was a research paper released by Bing uh, recently that discussed, um, pretty much discussed um, um, how Microsoft would come up with the credibility, the I guess the how worthy a page is of a web page. And um, this payment is a PDF document by a res uh, research paper, very scientific. Basically, it's named Augmenting the Web Pages and Search Results for Improved Credibility. Um, good thing I didn't have to go through it all. Um, Bill Swaski, SEO by the Sea, went through every single piece of that document. He broke it down into on page features and how, and off page features and other things. So basically, he described the signals from Microsoft as on the eye of on page size, spelling errors, number of ads on the page, and domain type dot com, government, etc. Um, off page features such as um, awards and certifications they have to receive, toolbar page rank and rankings for queries used in generating their data set, um, and also sharing information using Bitly, Facebook, likes, URLs, Twitter, bookmarklets, delicious, stuff like that. And there's also some other things like user aggregated non public data from toolbar usage such as general popularity, so unique visitors, obviously, um, where the people are coming from, the geographic reason how long they spend on the site, revisiting patterns, and ex expert popularity of showing how people in a specific field will actually visit the site. So that's um, more information about that. It's a pretty cool paper, March 22nd at SCRoundTable.com. We have links to it all and more information with, uh, from Bill Spolsky. Uh, March 21st, we posted about how to get into Bing News. We talked about this back a couple years ago, uh, but now we have a post from Gian from Microsoft who basically in detail wrote where you submit your request, what you should provide, um, what you should write in that email and how you should actually make your case to Bing to be included in the Bing News. Um, I'm not sure how popular Bing News is yet, but it can't hurt if you get included into that site. Um, obviously, you have to be a publication, a news source, but you can definitely try to get included. March 21st at this point, roundtable.com. Uh, Google AdWords has added some more location targeting controls. It's pretty neat, the features that they've added. It um, could be found under the... Um, campaign settings under uh, the standard location options. You'll see an advanced location option. You click on that and then you'll have options for target, targeting method and exclusion methods. Under targeting options, you'll have the ability to target either physical locations or search intent. Physical location is actually location of a person. So if you're typing in restaurants and they're in New York physically, it would actually show them New York restaurants. If you're, somebody's typing in, if you want to only target search intent where somebody types in New York restaurants, Google could do that too or you could target both. Or you can exclude by physical location or by search intent. So you should probably take a look at that as well. Um, some really neat features. March 24th at SCRoundTable.com. I'm um, talking about um, ads. Uh, Microsoft Ad Center, the Bing and Yahoo search ads that you see now, um, are all controlled in Microsoft Ad Center. Um, on March 24th, starting early in the morning until probably l uh, late afternoon, uh, Microsoft, Eastern Time at least, Microsoft was preventing, or through a bug, allowing people to log into their accounts and see their campaigns and manage their ads. Um, I'm not sure what the problem was, but it lasted for a lot of time. Um, and finally, they fixed it, I think yesterday, about 3 p.m. Eastern. Um, but it's, it's resolved. So if you did have problems and you want to vent, uh, we have more information on March 24th at seroundtable.com. Uh, Google AdWords. Um, they also had a small issue with their study guide. Um, over the weekend, if you wanted to study for their uh, Google AdWords uh, certification, you couldn't because the study guides went missing. It's back uh, as of Monday morning, um, March 21st at srntable.com. Uh, Google AdSense had a major update to their homepage, a much desired update. They finally added a lot more data in terms of estimated and, and earnings uh, reports. Um, they did it this past week. Um, the earnings they've released um, on the, the homepage include estimated earnings for today, as of so far for today, uh, yesterday's estimated earnings, estimated earnings for this month total, estimated earnings for last month, the total unpaid earnings, the most recent payment earnings, um, and it's pretty neatly laid out. This is a feature that people wanted for a really long time. We have screenshots and more information on March 25th today at sroundtable.com. 
Talking about AdSense, AdSense replaced that I symbol, which actually used to be ads by Google symbol, on the bottom right corner of every ad, and they're going to be replacing it by ad choices. By putting ad choices there, Google saying they're in compliance with the online advertising industry's self-regulatory program for online behavioral advertising. And it basically, Google's, as Google puts it, it allows Google to be more proactive, practically give users notice and choices about the ads they see. Uh, basically, this is letting Google take one more step and change, changing the I to, to a thing called ad choices gives Google the ability to actually standardize their ads and let people have options when they see the ads to opt out of certain types of, of certain types of behavioral targeting and features like that. If you want to look at that and see how that might affect your ads, which I don't think it will affect your ads, March 22nd at SARuntable.com. Um, New York City, seems like New York City has actually banned Google Images um, from being used in the classrooms. Um, Google has not confirmed this, nor has New York City called me back about this, uh, but the New York City Department of Education Chief Information Security Officer or in Hamani, Hamami, basically sent out an email to all the teachers and the, and the schools and everything that this was um, something they prevented and blocked. Um, I have not, I have no confirmation about this, but I have more information about it on March 21st at surroundtable.com. Um, finally, the Google logo. Um, there was a big Google logo yesterday for the Harry Houdini's 137th birthday. Um, it was a pretty cool logo. Um, I'm not going into the difference, but basically it was handcuffed, and I'll show you a screenshot of it as well. And also the searching round table, we anticipated that happening, and we had a special Houdini logo as well, theme on our website as well. It was pretty cool. March 24th at SCRoundtable.com. I'll share a picture in the video. Anyway, thanks so much for listening to the Search Buzz video recap. My name is Barry Schwartz, and thanks for uh, coming and listening. And uh, I'll see you guys next week. Everyone have a great weekend. Today, again, is March 25th. This is news we covered over the Search Roundtable at SCRoundtable.com. Um, over the past week. Everyone have a great weekend. Bye.